Good morning, dear participants, or maybe should I say dear friends already. We are here together today for the 15th session of our online course. The subject is not an easy one, because to speak about human values is nice, but to help children discover them is a different matter. It's not easy. So there are three methods, direct, indirect, and co-curricular. I don't know who invented that word, but it's co-curricular. The direct approach can be very seldom applied, unfortunately. It's difficult that uh, a school director will ask you to teach human values one by one. It is, uh, it's ideal but it's not very common. So most of us are limited to transmitting the values in an indirect way, using every chance to represent them. Of course, by example, but there are, there are methods. And that in itself is an art. Fortunately, we will learn it today from our dear lecturer, Raksha Metani, and we will later, later practice it in a, in a workshop with our dear Fabiana Larucha. Raksha's short bio says that she has worked in the field of education for more than 17 years with experience at all educational levels, including formal and informal contexts. She is passionate. Hey, here we have the Raksha. We can see them. How are you, Raksha? Good morning, dear Jordi and everyone. It's my joy to be here today. <laughs> <laughs> See, Raksha is passionate about education and human values, and she has dedicated most of her professional life to implement an educational model that promotes human excellence, inspired by and based on the philosophy and methodology of Satya Sai Educare. Currently, she works in the British International School, Green Valley School in Palma de Mallorca, Spain where she teaches weekly human values lessons to all the primary and secondary students. She is also the Education in Human Values and Character Building Director at the school, taking care of the social and emotional well-being of every child. So far for the paper. Now, let me say that our Raksha is a citizen of the world. She may be lecturing leadership to Australian youth, as well as values to American ladies. She always has a kind word for everybody and displays an uncanny wisdom. She is what some people call an old soul in a young body. She is also an outstanding artist whose hand can be seen in many of the presentations of this online course. But above all, above all, let me tell you, she is a tireless divine worker. I salute you, the Araksha, if you are still there. <laughs> Thank you for your warm words and kind words of appreciation, dear Jordi. Um, the feeling is mutual and it's a joy to be here today with all of you to share um, everything that has to do with Satya Sai Educare. Mm. I always say that it is for me the greatest jewel I have discovered on planet Earth. I always say this, and it really is true. Good. So I really look forward to, to listening to, to all you have to explain to us as how, how can we transmit the values. Uh, it's the most important thing. I mean, talking about it, developing values in ourselves is important. But what we can do for children is paramount. Thank you, Dr. Jordi. So I will start sharing my screen to, to commence today's presentation, which is always a true blessing and privilege to talk about. So I will just start sharing my screen. And yes, as Jordi has very correctly said, today we will be talking about the three teaching approaches, the direct, indirect and co-curricular. We will go into each one of them a bit more in depth. Of course, we will first see an overview too. However, I would like to just start off uh, reminding ourselves about 
certain things that um, I would say it's always good to, to keep in mind, to keep really present in our heart. And as we know, the Set Aside Education and Human Values Program, it has an open structure that can support and complement already existing pedagogical systems. So it is something that is very um, easy to implement in a school. And when I say easy, I know that it, it involves a lot of effort, but it really is like the un, it could be the undercurrent of everything that happens in a school because it is just bringing that awareness of spirituality and human values education in all that we do. And that's why today we're going to see the three different approaches in which we can truly um, enhance the practice of human values in the educational model. And as we know, one of the objectives of the program uh, is not just, uh, I know we talk about children a lot of the time and we talk about an educational program, how to apply this in um, with children, but we know that SSEHV is for teenagers, it's for adults, it's for each and every one of us. And once we understand the objectives of this program, it allows our intuition and creativity as teachers to blossom and it contributes as well to our own personal growth, which is what we all experience all the time. As soon as we, we think about Satisai Educare, um, this creative mind connected to the heart, uh, it's like it's, it's there, moving, moving, and always coming from, we get these wonderful ideas that come from the source constantly. So as we have been saying, the five human values can be implemented through the direct approach. And we saw a lot about this. The direct approach is when we develop and teach specific value-based lesson plans with a single focus on human values, incorporating the five teaching techniques that are associated with SSEHV. I will just give a brief overview of all the three approaches now, and then we will go in depth in each one of them. The indirect approach is when we integrate the human values into the existing school curriculum through the different subjects. And as Jordi very correctly said, um, in most schools, there is no such specific human values lesson as such. I'm very blessed to have this opportunity in the school I work at. Um, because the children actually have weekly human values classes, as I have shared a few times, both in primary and secondary. So that uh, permits me and allows me to apply the, the human values program through the direct approach. But it is more common in most schools that maybe don't have something so integrated as such to be able to do it through the different subjects and not only through the different subjects, but also through the co-curricular approach. And that means by adopting a value approach and enhancing the practice of human values in any co-curricular activity. We will go into what we exactly mean by a co-curricular activity, and we will see that once we get to that part of the presentation. And when one asks ourselves, what would be the ideal situation in any school, in any scenario where a child is learning, we know that the ideal situation is that all these approaches are used in coordination. Because the truth is that when we understand the importance of human values and how they are related to the integral and holistic development of a child, the truth is that they can be drawn out from any subject, from any activity. And therefore, that's why it says that ideally human values should and can find their place in whatever form of work and interaction we engage in with children. And I would say that actually we can, human values can find their place in whatever form of work and interaction in everything that we do in our daily lives. So once again, yes, we're talking about education for children right now specifically more and seeing how we can develop this, but I like to think about this as in our own lives, any scenario, any situation is a perfect moment and time to practice and enhance these human values. And that's why 
we always uh, remind ourselves, and we had this beautiful presentation by Esther Cris on the triple partnership, where we saw the importance of the child's, um, uh, you know, the pillars of the child's education, of course, school, but mainly their home too. So it's so important to work together with the, with the children, with the students, parents too, as this cooperation will make this task much easier and more importantly, much more successful. So we saw the direct approach in quite a bit of detail because um, we have seen the five teaching techniques. We had actually presentations on each one of them on silent sitting or meditation on the light, on storytelling, universal prayer or quotation, group activity and group singing. So as we said, the direct approach or method is when we have a specific human values lesson with that purpose and focus to teach that uh, human value or any practical aspect of a value through these five methods, these five techniques. So what is unique as we saw is we have all heard about storytelling, uh, singing, a quotation. We know that of course, but it's really beautiful when all five techniques are put together in one single lesson. Like I say, it, it really just creates this magic that students from different perspectives, they're able to integrate and understand and then practice these values. So this powerful combination really develops all aspects of the human personality, physical, emotional, mental, intellectual, and spiritual. And the main focus for the direct approach is because it is, it is uh, this single focus on human values itself, uh, of course, uh, like everything we do, the, the objective is to, to achieve human excellence by bringing out what we truly are, by expressing our true nature, which are these human values. We saw examples of the direct approach. Our dear Vasiliki gave us a beautiful uh, presentation last time on how to create a lesson plan. And if you remember, she showed us the example of um, Daedalus and Icarus, the story, the myth, and this was more for 10 to 12 year old children. So she went through all the five teaching techniques and how we can uh, use these techniques for this um, particular lesson plan. We also saw when I presented the five teaching techniques, when I did an overview presentation on them, if you remember, I shared an example of one of the classes that I had done for the children, four to six year olds, uh, where we spoke about this beautiful story about the colors of the world that had a discussion who was the most important color. And uh, we shared you know, a quote to accompany this lesson may the world live in peace and not in pieces. We saw a song, we saw all the other techniques in combination. And the same when we did our workshop on the five teaching techniques, we actually did something that I had done together with the secondary students. And we used on that occasion, uh, the real life stories of Steve Jobs. And uh, we saw come again, a song to accompany it, an activity, a quote. So we have seen three uh, nice examples of how to apply the SSEHV program through the direct approach. So today our focus will be more on the indirect approach and the co-curricular approach. So moving on to the indirect approach, as we saw before and have said, human values can be drawn out from any subject, any subject. And during our lessons as teachers, we know how important it is to carefully select whatever we use, whatever material, resources, whatever we have planned. And we can really take this as an opportunity to enhance the practice of human values. So the texts we use, the stories we select, the tasks we prepare, the songs we sing and listen to. Sometimes, you know, we might play background music or what songs we listen to. So it's really, really important that everything we, we, we share with our students is something that, that can truly help them connect with who they are and bring out their true nature too. 
So what we're going to see now is how through our own intuition and creativity, because again, once we understand the objectives of SSEHB, of Satisai Educare, um, our spiritual heart will always be a rich source from which these constructive and inspiring ideas are generated. So over the next slides, what I would like to share with you actually is a few examples of how um, uh, right now, as Jordi said, uh, my role at school is a, I am the human values director and teacher. So actually I am able to apply um, the direct method because in the classes I give, I can combine the five teaching techniques and teach a lesson on human values every week. However, I also sometimes uh, recommend and suggest and advise teachers how they can integrate these values in their subjects too. And I also had the fortune of being a class teacher for three whole years, actually. So I was teaching math, science, uh, um, literacy, which is all about, um, you know, how, teaching students to read, write. Uh, I even had to give, um, uh, you know, Spanish lessons to the non-native group. So Spanish for beginners, uh, you know, computing lessons and all of that. So the truth is I had the opportunity to really see how as a teacher who, who, who teaches any other subject, there is such a big room and space to apply and to really put into practice this connection with the human values to enhance their practice. So I'd like to share some of these ideas with you. So here we can see uh, over the next slides, we will just see some examples of how human values can be integrated in English literacy classes. So again, this has to do with how to teach children to read, to write, when they need to learn how to structure paragraphs, uh, grammar, what a sentence is, you know, the different parts of a sentence, the adjectives, the verbs, the nouns, the adverbs. So there is so much to teach in this English literacy class. So I would just like to share some examples of, for example, we know that in teaching stories are indeed a key element. So here, for example, are some of the stories I've had a chance to work with in the English literacy classes. We have this beautiful story called The Huge Bag of Worries. It's such an amazing story about a little girl who realizes that she's accumulating a lot of worries in a bag and wherever she goes, the worries follow her. She doesn't know what to do with them. She tries to hide them, um, you know, under the ground. I won't tell you how it ends and everything because maybe you can find it. It is available on YouTube too as a, as a video, but you can maybe also uh, uh, go ahead and look for the book too. But it's such a beautiful story because then at some point, she really doesn't know what to do with these worries. And a very wise woman advises her how to face these worries and suddenly they all disappear or she learns how to live with them. It's very special. And then there's this other story too that I had a chance to work with the children, Angry Arthur. And it's a beautiful story about how anger can lead, you know, it has beautiful illustrations as, as to how his anger leads to like an earthquake of anger, uh, you know, uh, all these different things, a thunderstorm of anger. And again, the story then goes into, it gives us the opportunity to talk about anger management and all of this. And I'm sure many of you might be familiar with this story, Elmer, the elephant, which really does talk about unity in diversity. So what did we do? We had to learn how to, one of the objectives in English literacy for the, for the seven to eight year olds is to write a story, to know how to start with an introductory paragraph, you know, all of that. So what we did is I, I, I took the inspiration in this case of the story, Angry Arthur, and in the classroom, what we had is we created a beautiful display, as you can see on the screen right now. And we called it our year three bookshop. So you see, it, it, it makes the children feel really happy when they see their work displayed. And it also serves as an inspiration for other classes and creates this environment and culture of love. And when parents come in, they like seeing their, their children's work displayed on the wall and in such a beautiful and meaningful way. So the children, they wrote their 
their stories about we we I, we asked them to invent a story about how to deal with anger or a situation of anger. So they had to use adjectives, paragraphs. We worked on all the objectives that the literacy lesson had, but we used it uh, as an opportunity to speak about a topic that enhances human values. So as you can see, uh, we tried to present it in a way that was attractive, that it really looked like, you know, these books in a bookstore. And uh, the children are really excited when they when they see their work displayed, as I said before. And I would just like to share a couple of these stories with you. So, for example, this is a story by Emma. And like I said, it's for seven and eight year old children who did this. And in this short story, Emma says she, she entitled it The Girl Who Wanted to Save the World. And it's a, such a sweet, simple story that says, one perfect sunny day, Emma and Kathy were outside. Then they saw their best friends. Kathy ran to her best friend, Poppy, and Emma ran to Lisa. Kathy showed Poppy how to do a somersault. Poppy wanted to try and she tried and tried and suddenly she got so angry because she couldn't. After, Kathy said, take it easy. I can't, screamed Poppy. But if you don't take it easy and change your attitude, you can't do it. Poppy tried on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, and finally on Friday, she could do it. She learned that it is not good to get angry when something goes wrong. It is better to have patience. Try, try until you succeed. So this is uh, her own imagination, her own plot, uh, you know, her own characters. Of course, they did a rough draft, then a neat draft with all the spelling. Uh, so you see, you can correct the grammar here, the everything. Everything is exact. So you, we do fulfill all the objectives of that lesson itself, but it's such a beautiful chance to integrate human values. Um, I won't read maybe uh, all of these contributions, but this is another beautiful story from a boy. And it's about, you know, well, maybe I, I will just read it through. It will be quick. So the four teenagers. One day in summer, four handsome teenagers walked on the street in London. They bought themselves delicious ice cream. All of a sudden, a man, uh, by mistake, bumped into Victor's Oreo flavor ice cream. Victor got really angry. And so the man also had an ice cream. Victor said that he was going to do the same to the man, but Rob, Jan, and Colin said to Victor, it was not on purpose. They said, everyone makes mistakes. Victor thanked his friends for helping him understand and to do the right thing. His friends went to the shop again and bought him another ice cream. So it's really beautiful to see because these are the daily situations the seven and eight year old children might get angry about, you know, somebody dropped my ice cream, I'm going to do the same to you or you hit me with a ball, I would like to hit you back. And just having the presence of a few friends who tell you, look, they didn't do it on purpose, calm down, you know, so this is what they got out of this story, Angry Arthur and how they, they had their own thoughts and uh, their own creations. Another activity we once did in literacy was we were learning about acrostic poems. So as you know, acrostic poems is when you use the first letter of a word to create like a poem with um, the, the sentences that start with that. So I thought, why not? They can use their own names, their own names. And we just came up with this uh, creative idea, name those values. And through their own names, each one of them with the help of their friends, they wrote sentences using uh, the acro acrostic poem method about themselves that had to do with values. But how did they do it? They asked their friends on their table to give them suggestions like, you know, uh, can you tell me what you what you really appreciate about me? So they actually did these poems, not writing about themselves, but from the comments that other people uh, shared with them about themselves. So as you, we can see, we have a few examples here that are really beautiful too. So for example, Violet, very nice to my friends. I am a happy girl, open to new experiences, 
loving to my family, express my feelings with care, treat others with respect. Or for example, Tom, treat everyone kindly, open to making new friends. My little sister says, I am very helpful. So we, we have a few examples. And uh, if you remember when I shared in one of, uh, when we did the, the group singing, um, the group singing presentation, George and I, when we had the honor to present it together, I shared some video clips of a human values concert we had with the children. And actually in that human values concert afterwards, each child read their acrostic poem. Uh, to the whole group of students and their parents were there and it was such a beautiful experience. So again, this is taking advantage of a literacy class, learning how to write an acrostic poem, but enhancing uh, this thought about human values and how you know to discover our own treasures within and to appreciate the values that we see that our friends reflect too. So it was a very beautiful activity as well. We will also see how, for example, human values can be applied in a science lesson, for example. So we have seen this example actually together. If you remember when I presented the value of love, um, when it was our second presentation together, actually, we spoke about the fact that love is not created or destroyed. It is like an energy that's always transforming, always transforming because this is exactly how it is. So we took advantage of the water cycle and we learned you know, evaporation, condensation, precipitation. And through that, it, this was for five to six year old students. When we did this, we learned the whole cycle and they realized how everything is exactly, you know, like the water does not really go anywhere or is lost anywhere. It just changes its shape and it's constantly this um, kind of the cycle, as we say. So we related it to, to love, to human values, how they're always present. They may change form, shared with different people, uh, put uh, more emphasis sometimes in this form or in that form, but it's always there and it's just being shared constantly. Nothing is wasted, nothing is lost. So in that sense, we linked it to it, but we also studied the three states of matter, solid, liquid, and uh, gas. So if you remember, well, this is just the children. The, the, the beautiful thing about working with children is that when it really has this ingredient of human values and they feel so touched by it, it they, they make it their own. So for example, when we bring down a mural, they wanna take a part of it home. So usually what we do with these displays is when we bring them down from the wall, I cut them into little pieces and each one of them takes a piece home because they really, really want to do that. So for example, here we can see that they're, you know, we're actually combining maths too because they had to like make it as a puzzle and put all the pieces together. And at the end of the day, each child took a piece home. But if you remember, we also did this experiment with um, when we did the, the three states of matter. And sometimes this life gifts us with these magical moments. And I remember sharing this with you that when we did the experiment of how to like, you know, liquid, uh, when we put it in the, uh, in, the, in the freezer and how it turns into ice, I remember this sweet little boy, Kevin, he said, okay, I understand everything, Ms. Raksha, but there's something I don't understand. How did you manage to put the heart inside there? <laughs> and I remember looking at him and I didn't realize, and I said, what? So he put it up and another sweet girl, Selma, her intuitive direct answer was, Kevin, it's very normal because we talk about love. We are loving to each other. So the heart just came in there. So, you know, it really is beautiful working with human values in every lesson because like I said, life itself gifts us with these special moments that are hard to explain sometimes, but are filled with so much meaning too. So this was an example in a science lesson. And another example with science is when I was teaching the children the five senses. So I thought, and this, you know, sometimes one is amazed at exactly this source of wisdom within, this source of inspiration that when you sit down and connect to it, 
it really brings out all these uh, wonderful ideas and you think, wow, thank you, you know, like uh, just thanking life and the universe for this wisdom that is within each and every one of us. So I thought, how about, you know, we're working on the five senses. We did all the experiments in class that had to do with, you know, different things that had to do with the senses. But because uh, I planned it for the, Jan the month of January and in the month of January, we work on the value of peace. I thought, how about relating the five senses to the value of peace? So in our art class, what we did is I asked the children, what does peace look like? So related to the, the, the site. And they were like, what do you mean, what does peace look like? I said, well, if you could draw peace, if you could have an image representing peace, what would it look like? So each one of them, and you know, we had the paint and everything. And these are some of the things that uh, you will see. As I said, we ask ourselves what peace looked like. And these paintings represent our unique personal thoughts. So these are from six to seven year old children. And uh, sorry, five to six, actually, because this was in year one. So five to six. So Ayana says peace looked like sharing and love because I asked them to accompany it with a little sentence. They wrote it, uh, you know, um, on a board first. I correct the spelling and then they write it nicely, uh, you know, on their final um, final display as well. So peace looked like sharing and love. Uh, another boy said peace looked like playing at the beach. Peace looks like my house filled with love. Peace looks like when you hear and watch the waves and a shining rainbow. So these are all their own thoughts. And then I thought, because when they were actually doing this activity, I didn't tell them because I knew that it would be more intuitive if I didn't tell them. And I call them in groups of, I mean, each one individually, but like I asked five children, what does peace taste like and they looked at me when I asked them they were like Miss Reksha peace does not have a taste and then I thought something just if it did have a taste what would it taste like or what would peace smell like what does it sound like and it was so beautiful to hear their responses so each one of them were telling me in my ear what uh, peace sounds like or tastes like or feels like and we also displayed their answers on the on the wall. So, for example, you see what does peace sound like? Uh, look at these beautiful answers. One of them said, "Peace sounds like birds singing. Uh, peace sounds like our human values songs. Peace sounds like waves, like relaxing music." And one child even said, "Peace sounds like silence." So, of course, we know that human values go beyond our senses, but the truth is we perceive things uh, in this world through our senses. So the external world, if we really take advantage of this input to enhance our human values, too. So it was so beautiful to hear their thoughts because they realized that when you hear birds singing, it helps you feel this peace. When we sing our human value songs, it promotes this peace. When we hear relaxing music or when we are in silence. So it was so beautiful to hear their thoughts. And they were really excited to listen to other children what they said too. Or what does peace taste like? Peace tastes like strawberries, pancakes, chocolate cake, ice cream, pizza, what does peace feel like? So something that when they touch, it makes them feel peaceful. Peace feels like my fluffy toy, like my house, like my bunny rabbit, like a teddy bear, like cuddling my puppy. What does peace smell like? It smells like fresh flowers, like pizza, like chocolate milk, like pasta with tomato, like perfume. And the girl who said perfume is because she said, especially her granny's perfume. So she really understood that, you know, when she's with her granny and in her presence and that perfume makes her feel peace. So it was so beautiful to connect these five senses with the human values too. And as you can see in this uh, very beautiful picture of the classroom actually, um, since I'm very blessed, as I said, uh, to have the opportunity to actually apply the human values through the direct method, since it was the month of uh, January, we actually had human values classes through the direct method on peace. And as you can see, we have the May the World Live in Peace and Not in Pieces display, because that was the group activity 
of the direct method lesson. Uh, and then we also have the display of the five senses when we spoke about peace. So the whole environment in the classroom was related to peace in the month of January through science, through the direct method, and it was just so beautiful to see. I went a lot into detail with, um, with literacy and science, so I'm just going to share a few more examples of how this can be done with um, also other lessons, maybe less in detail, but I think this already gives us the feel of how truly any scenario is perfect to apply the human values through any subject in this case. In maths, just the, the phrasing of the word problems we use, like here, for example, the hungry caterpillar would like to share his fruit with his friends. He has nine delicious apples. How many apples will they each get? So, you know, they start dividing the apples, one, 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 two, 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 three, three, three. So it's, it's really beautiful to see that. And sometimes I must say, and I've also shared this with you before, it is so beautiful how the children themselves, <laughs> they apply the indirect method with me when I'm not even aware of it. When I taught the, the times tables, I remember I shared this with you also when I spoke about the value of love. But this beautiful boy, Gustav, when we finished the activities of the two times table, the five and the 10, the fast finishers, they could just take a whiteboard and do something, you know, additional activities related to it. And Gustav came up to me and he was like, Miss Raksha, did you realize that you have not taught us the most important times table of all? And I looked at him like, sorry, did I forget? And I was thinking I started with the two, the five and then the 10. And he's like, Miss Raksha, you really don't know? And I was like, no, but maybe you can teach me good stuff. And he turned this board around and he said, it's the love times table. You know this. And he was like, you know it, but you needed to like teach us. You need to remind us that this is the most important times table in the world. When you share your love with one person, one person is happy. When you share your love with two, it multiplies to two people and then with three and then with four. So he said, so this is indeed the most important times table ever. And when you teach the other classes next year or any other year, uh, the times tables, please don't forget to, to start with this one. So you see, this is Gustav integrating uh, human values through the indirect method without even the prompting of a teacher in this case. Examples in geography, for example, this was um, with the uh, older children, eight to nine year old children, and their topic was to study the rainforest. And I would just like to actually read the objectives of this unit. So the learning objectives for this rainforest uh, project, which is in the curriculum, is for students to develop geographical knowledge about the location and climate of tropical rainforests, it is also, and look at this, it's so beautiful how human values is already integrated actually in the objective. So to understand the principle of diversity and how living things are connected together within the tropical rainforest ecosystem. This is also so special to develop an understanding of the negative impacts of human activity on the rainforest and also the positive ways in which people are working to conserve them. And finally, to develop a sense of responsibility and that working together, we can all contribute to a more sustainable future. So this is a unit in geography in the curriculum. However, as you see through the learning objectives phrased by the curriculum itself, it has so much to do with human values, the awareness of respect to the planet, respect to Mother Earth, being grateful for everything that we have, uh, using resources in a good way. So we, we took advantage of like this topic to, to each child chose one of the, the living beings in the rainforest. We spoke about the climate, we spoke about all these different things, but as you see, and then we also, we, at one moment, we had to talk about the different continents of the world. So when we spoke about the different continents and you know, we did stress again, the importance of, okay, we may come from different countries, be in different continents, but 
let us always remember, may the world live in peace and not in pieces. Let us appreciate this diversity. So any, any lesson is such a perfect opportunity to integrate these human values. Languages, like I said, I had to teach, for example, Spanish to, to beginners. And this was more in secondary students. So we know how important it is when we have reading comprehension activities, children need to read a text, they need to then answer questions, learn how to answer in full sentences. So what we did is we actually did it with the students through inspiring characters. So I chose people like Malala Yousafzai, like Nelson Mandela, like Mahatma Gandhi, all these special characters. So we, we, we prepare, prepared like a, a text that they had to read. And through that text, they then had to answer questions questions related, reading comprehensive questions. But as we see, we integrate our human values already here because they learned and they had to answer questions like, you know, what happened to Malala Yousafzai? Uh, what did she do? Why, what did she want to, uh, you know, um, have in her country? Why did she, why did she uh, win the Nobel Peace Prize? What has inspired you most about her? So they learned from her determination, her courage and all of that. So again, we did it with many different characters and learning a language, but through these inspiring characters. Art, art, you've seen the displays. I think art is one of the, the subjects that we can truly integrate human values in all our displays. But when we covered the topic, for example, about reusing, reducing, reusing and recycling, the children made their own like uh, monuments and different sites and they use recycled materials. So we spoke about all of that. It was linked to science too because of the topic and that. And now the last example I would like to share with you about the indirect approach is something that one of the students actually did in computing. So, you know, we children have to learn how to use their computers and all of that, different programs. And uh, what we're going to see now is actually something I did in human values, in the human values lesson, but then a student used for her computing lesson. So uh, we, in our human values lesson for secondary about gratitude, we spoke about this reflective thinking method, which we use a lot, like what is gratitude? Why is it important to feel gratitude? When should we feel gratitude? Where, like, uh, where do we feel most gratitude? To who should we express our gratitude? And how can we express our gratitude? And here, what is so important? How can we express our gratitude through words, actions, thoughts, character, and our heart? And of course, this was the human values lesson. So the direct method. So um, Claudia from year eight, uh, a, a few years ago, she actually did her own um, beautiful reflection when we did it together. And then I'm going to stop sharing my screen just for a moment because what Claudia did was that all of that in her computing class, they were learning how to use a program. And she was so inspired by this um, activity in the human values lesson that I will just share my screen once again, because I'd like to share something that she sent me actually, and that I feel is so beautiful. So let me just share my screen once again, sorry. I'm going back to Zoom. Here I am. Okay, share screen. So this is what Claudia did in her presentation. So she had this beautiful, this beautiful idea of using this program Prezi with gratitude. And, you know, she started off with what is gratitude? So you see, she put all her thoughts in this program. Then why do we have to express gratitude? What, you know, so everything that she had learned in human values, she used it in her computing lesson. And, uh, you know, as you can see, it's just this whole thing that she did together which is so, so, so beautiful. And then she included special thoughts as well, like it is through gratitude for the present moment that the spiritual dimension of life opens up. So these are all these wonderful things that children can do. And what I would like to do for the last 10 minutes too is also share some ideas. I'm going to share my screen again now using uh, the slides again. How we've seen now, of course, the the indirect method, but we will also look into the co-curricular approach, which is also so, so important. 
So as we have seen the direct method with the five teaching techniques, then we also have the, the of course, the, the indirect method through all the different subjects. And then we also have the co-curricular approach. And what is this co-curricular approach? It is actually enhancing the practice of human values through any activity, any program, or any learning experience that is complementary to the curriculum. And this can take place either inside or outside school. So some examples, when we say it can happen either inside or outside school is because maybe it doesn't happen to, through a specific subject, uh, like we saw through the indirect method, but sometimes in some schools, like we know the children and the older children are engaged in preparing the school magazine or newspaper. So this is like a co-curricular activi activity that complements complements the existing program. Or uh, sometimes there are workshops and clubs like a gardening workshop, things like that, excursions and trips. So we have excursions to a museum or to, uh, you know, the recycling center of glass. So children can sometimes complement their learning, as it says here, complementary to the curriculum. So maybe it's not included specifically as an objective, but it's those activities, those programs, those experiences that enhance the existing objectives in a curriculum too. Cultural performances, we know how beautiful these can be. Festivities and celebrations. So to use, for example, um, you know, uh, Christmas, Christmas to use that as a beautiful opportunity to, to practice solidarity. Like in our school, we, during the Christmas period, we always get children to bring in toys that are in really good condition or reading books. And we donate these to, for example, to orphanages or people who may, children who may be less fortunate. So to take advantage of this uh, Christmas season, you know, where people receive presents and those who may not have the resources to help them with this. So these are examples of co-curricular activities too. Any activity that has to do with caring for the environment, taking the children to a beach, to, you know, to do a beach cleanup or a forest cleanup activity, any other service activity, going to an orphanage. This is something very common that sometimes many schools do when children prepare a play or prepare something beautiful, then they present it maybe in an orphanage, in an old age home. And like we said, sometimes these activities are not organized by school itself, but after school activities, like, uh, for example, when Basiliki, she presented the beautiful story with, you know, Daedalus and Icarus, and we saw the, the class, those are human values classes that take place outside school and that are organized outside school, but they are part of the co-curricular approach. We can understand it that way because they enhance the practice of human values and they do it through the direct method, but outside school too. So we have all these beautiful examples. And I would just like to share one specific example of how to integrate the co-curricular, I mean, human values through the co-curricular approach through this very special program that we did with the five and six-year-old children that was called the Values Island. So what is the Values Island? Since we know that values are treasures that are latent within each and every one of us, I thought, why not invite the students on an adventure to discover these values together? So we spoke about all the different things of how we can actually, you know, find these values within. What do we need to do? We need to know we have them, but show we have them. We need to practice them. So what we do is we have nine different treasure chests. The students, we discover one value per month. Actually, in September and October, we work on the same value. So we discover one value per month. And it's very beautiful because when you are a class teacher and you start the day off, we actually start the day off uh, when we did this project. Um, the captain, we had a captain for the day and the captain would remind all students, what value are we discovering this month? Okay, we're discovering the value of respect. And, uh, you know, I would say, could you remind us about the quotations for respect? So the student would be like, you know, treat others as you would like them to treat you. And then not only do we remind ourselves of the quotation, the captain, 
what's the role of the captain? Well, the, the captain is the one who guides the ship. So each child has the opportunity every day, a different child in the month to be the captain, to be an exemplar of respect and to lead us to our destination to really discover this treasure within ourselves. So at the beginning of the year, what do the students do? They prepare the Values Island themselves. This is actually a beautiful project that integrates, you know, it is the co-curricular approach because it complements the, the curriculum, even though it's not an objective as such, it's complementary to it. But you know, we then had uh, direct lessons talking about these values. We had indirect lessons, like somehow integrating them in, in all the different subjects to the value of the month. And then here, for example, in art, the children decorating, they, they really have so much joy in making this island together, in making the different treasure chests, uh, you know, painting them with glitter, letting them shine. And yes, so like I said, there's the captain of the day, who, when we discovered respect, when did we open the treasure chest? Well, at the end of the month, when everybody has been a captain, when everyone has shared an experience that they have practiced respect. And of course they know that for it to keep shining, we need to keep practicing it because otherwise it's like they're not there. So we need to know that these values are within us because we practice them. And then each child, they also took home their own personal values island, where, as you see, there's like a puzzle. There were nine pieces that they needed to fill in. And after we discovered each one of them, so they, they would take a sticker home to a colored sticker, like a different colored sticker for each one that I prepared, a laminated one, and they would add it on their puzzle for their value island. And as we said, it's so important to participate with um, have families to participate. So what we did is every month, we also sent the families a document like this, uh, which was very, uh, you know, uh, user-friendly to read and to, to, to have in consideration with a quote, with the story that we covered so that they could ask the children about, oh, tell me the story you read about respect and things. You know, the song, the different activities, our learning objectives, what we wanted to learn with this value. And children could bring from home things related to respect, uh, a story, uh, you know, an experience to share. So it was really, really beautiful how throughout the year and then at the end of the year, of course, when we discovered all nine treasures, it was a huge celebration. And each one of us took a little part home. I got um, the value of respect. So it's my treasure. So actually, the children were really sweet because I was like, okay, we need to give each one. And they were like, Mr. Akshay, you forgot to include yourself in the list. And I said, oh, can I take a part of the Values Island home too? And they were like, of course. So we just like put in chits who would take what randomly. And yeah, so this is the treasure I took back home from, from that project that year. So as we have seen, you know, there are so many ways to integrate human values in all that we do. And I'd like to end with this image, which is um, the one we actually started with when we had the first title, because just like this ripple effect, one little drop it spreads and spreads. And truly, whether it's through the direct method, the indirect method, or the co-curricular approach, every opportunity in life is really a chance to share to enhance and to spread human values. I would say not only with the children, but for each and every one of us. So that is uh, up to now what I wanted to share. So Jordi, all back to you and thank you all for this opportunity once again. Thank you so, so much, dear Raksha. It's been very inspiring and, and heartwarming, I would say. Uh, it's question time. I invite everybody to address questions to Esther Chris through the chat. And uh, while you do it, let me say that uh, I found very interesting in your presentation that, um, that even, even uh, students, children, apply the, <laughs> the indirect method with you, with the teacher. As, as you said, when uh, Gustav and the heart or uh, I would say the bag of worries. Uh, it's surprising the children have also a bag of worries, like most of us uh, adults. 
I thought that it was uh, just us, but we have to drop it, shouldn't we? We do, and it's so beautiful, Claudie. Like, um, you know when Satya Sai says that a teacher's role is just, just, just to create this environment and culture of love, because every child has these treasures within. I mean, it really touches my heart, but that's what I see every day. This is what I see every day with these children. All we have to do is create this environment and culture of love, and they teach us, you know, because they bring it out. And they realize that it's something that not Ms. Ruxa is giving me or someone's giving me, it's something I have there. But of course, we do need to create these opportunities, this atmosphere, this environment for them to really blossom, really. It's like a seed. If a seed, you know, we can't grow a seed on concrete. We need to put it in the right fertile soil. So this is what I feel. But they are that seed. They have this wisdom, this uh, knowledge within them. And all we have to do is create the right scenario through everything we do to really enhance these opportunities. It's so nice. Maybe Esther Chris has already some questions for us. Esther Chris? Here I am, here I am, dear Jodi, dear Raksha. Congratulations for this beautiful presentation. And I really enjoyed it. But I think that maybe everybody is, uh, uh, it seems that we have all been without words. Everything is so clear and was so inspiring that we have no questions yet. <laughs> Only a beautiful comment. Oh, there is a question here. Here is the first one. Dear Raksha, this is amazing. Teachers dedicate extra time to prepare wall displays and so on. How many hours do you dedicate after school time to prepare all this? <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest with you, this actually is something that the children say because uh, when I'm at school, my priority is always them, the time with them. So all these displays are actually put up after school hours. Because I mean, I might cut something during a class, but there's always so much to do with the children. There's always a playground to go to to see how people are playing if if the children are happy if they if they you know if they're uh, if nobody's left alone so to be honest with every minute i have uh, it's more dedicated to every child being at school there but when you enjoy what you do when you love what you do and the secondary students sometimes help me cut out things so you know sometimes they might say miss rex i have a free hour do you have any anything i could help so it's not just something that one would do on their own mm -hmm. i get support from different students from from other staff members sometimes too but the putting up of the display and i actually like that very much because yeah i might stay back after school and do it or sometimes even at home you know watching a football match and cutting some things putting it together you can do that at the same time or my husband enjoys me telling him these stories so he helps me to cut or whatever and it's so beautiful when the children come back and they see ah oh, this is put up when did this happen you know <laughs> it wasn't here yesterday and it's here now but i feel that when they see your dedication to when they see how important they are to you. Um, I mean, I don't know how to explain this, but it's just, um, it's reciprocal because they give you so much. I mean, it's like a mother with their children, like not yes. a mother sacrifices her time or her energy. And it's not even a uh, sacrifice understood in its pure essence, like a sacred offering. It's not even, you know, so uh, I mean, it's a joy. It's just a real joy. But yes, it does involve a lot of hours of dedication, but filled with enthusiasm and great appreciation and gratitude. I can imagine that. And the, the, the most beautiful thing is that you inspire everybody around you, your kids helping you and even the family, your husband and everybody, because your energy is so full of joy of doing this job that uh, you inspire them that's very beautiful and it's the energy they take home because they are so involved so for example when we do one of these lessons you know like um what does peace smell like what does peace taste like you know what, what happens the children go home they're sitting with their grandmother or grandfather or with their dad and they're like dad okay listen 
let me see. I'm going to ask you some questions. Dad, what does peace smell like? And then what? <laughs> think if so if it if it did have a smell what does peace smell like what does peace taste like and then they come back to school and they're like Mr. Rex I did it with my dad and or with whoever <laughs> and look this is what he said so you know they're really imbibing what they what they what they do together what we do together in class and they want to share it they want to spread it further with um exactly with their families with their environment Yes, this is an ending. Everybody is inspired like this. I have two questions here. The, the next one is, how can we include parents in our EHB activities? Well, I feel at least in, a, in the school, what we do, I mean, there are more ways, of course, but what we do is we actually, like, for example, with the, this example of the Values Island, just letting them know what we're working with, the students at, at school, making them part of it is so important. And we have workshops for parents, for example, at the mm -hmm. beginning of the year where parents come in, they hear about the academic program, but they also hear about the importance of human values in our school, our ethos, you know, those five images, the, the sun, the ripple effect, the seed, the rainbow. So all those, all those things that become part of our ethos. I feel that, and sometimes when we do like these special activities, like, you know, these um, fairs or um, active, like when the children bring in uh, the toys or, you know, in Christmas, these kind of special events, parents are involved because sometimes we've had like um, fundraising activities to at school. So parents are always given the opportunity to, to be involved. And I feel that, for example, when we apply SSEHB outside the school context too, like mm -hmm. for example, the examples that Vasiliki, George, other people, you know, Elena, what she does, um, Beritza, all these, uh, Suzanne, like everyone who's applying human values in their surroundings, when we, when we teach children outside school too, I feel we always find the way to involve parents by letting them know what we're doing with the children to give them the opportunity to participate. And this is, this is there's so many ways to, to do this. Yes, this is transforming the, the whole society. It's amazing. So here we have another question, Jody, can we or? Uh, actually it should be the last one because it's, okay. uh, it's beyond Good. 12, beyond 11, I see. Good, so the last one is, children always surprise us with their comments. What was the most uplifting children's reaction in the class that was a great inspiration for you, dear Raksha? I, I, it's so hard to choose. It's so hard to choose. But for example, what I shared with Gustav now was amazing. But I can remember Sifa now. Sifa, uh, she was a girl who came in with so many problems with regard to her behavior, her this, and sometimes those challenging children are the ones that give you the, and I remember when she had to leave school because she was going back to her country, Norway, where she came from, uh, she, she, she was so difficult, like she, she made me have the, <laughs> the hardest moments ever. I remember once I told her, go into the bathroom because I can't see you right now. She had hurt someone's head stepped on someone said like it was so so extreme you know the the, yes. the hurt she had caused that even I needed that time and I was like I can't see you right now I need space so go in the bathroom and the children looked at me like what and I was like yeah because otherwise I, I don't know I, I just don't want to see you right now see so if I need you to <laughs> to give me that space and then when she came out I told her I was really sorry that I I didn't have the energy in that moment to know how to deal with the serious things she had done. So there were so many things that we lived together and then she transformed her behavior so much, so much, so much. And when she left, she once told me, Ms. Rakhita, you know what? I will never forget everything we have done together in our classes because every time I practice um, respect, gratitude, this, I, I think I will remember you. I think I will remember you, she said. <laughs> but I will tell you something for sure. I will definitely remember you when I don't practice respect or when I don't practice <laughs> gratitude or when I don't practice you know like being kind to others she said because you know I will remember so much that I'm not being what I really am 
that in that moment, I will definitely remember you. So I found it so sweet that, you know, maybe when I practice respect, maybe when I practice gratitude, I'll remember what we did together, but I definitely will when I don't, because it's going to be like a reminder, like, you know, I'm not being truthful to myself. And, you know, for me that, I mean, right now, that's, that's what has come to my heart and my memory. So the children, they really, really treasure what we do with them because it's not mine or Satya Sai's or somebody else's, it's their own nature. And they don't want to disappoint themselves. So they want to be truthful to themselves. That is the, that is the magic of SSDHB. Exactly. Thank you so much, dear Raksha, for your answers. And please remember that you can write uh, your, your questions if you have more. And uh, our dear Raksha will answer them voluntarily. So, Jordi, you yes, are yes. back. <laughs> Thank you so, so much, uh, dear Esther Chris, for uh, your always perfect service, chat service <laughs> that you <laughs> give to, to all of us. And uh, now it is time for, uh, for a pause. Uh, we have about five minutes, so please uh, hurry up and come back that uh, Fabiana is waiting uh, for us with more wonders. So see you now. Welcome back, dear participants. Just come, sit, sit again in front of your screens. We are going to continue our program, our today's program. Uh, we're going to do it with the help of Fabiana Laruccia. Are you there, dear Fabiana? Yes. Good uh, morning, Jordi. Good morning, well, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, Fabiana. Fabiana is greeting us from uh, Bologna, an Italian city. But actually, she was born further south in, uh, in, um, in, 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 in Tarento. We all, we all know this famous uh, Italian dance, the Tarantella. <laughs> she, she is from there, from that wonderful and sunny region. She is a teacher trainer and a referent of ISE Italy, uh, because she is a member of uh, ISE South Europe. For over 20 years, she has been happy to deepen the educare philosophy and spread the principles of Satya Sai education in human values. Fabiana has a degree in economics and she has a special specializations in the social field. She works as a consultant and trainer for companies and schools on the issues of sustainability, human relations and group cooperation. Her intent is to inspire and facilitate the awakening of human values for the evolution of an ethical consciousness and the qualitative change of our life on the planet, no less. Good. Dear Fabiana, will you please uh, help us uh, understand in a practical way how to implement uh, Raksha's uh, advice uh, in, our, in our daily life and in our tuition towards uh, children? Please go ahead. Yes, Jordi. Thank you for this nice and kind introduction. It's a really pleasure to do the workshop also for this module dedicated to the three educational approaches explained very, very well by Raksha and oriented to promote an education based on human values. Now I share the screen for our workshop. The goal of the workshop is to train ourselves in designing a co-curricular activity. As previously highlighted, the co-curricular approach aims to enhance the practice of human values through any activity, program or learning experience complementary to the curriculum which takes place inside or outside school. 
What activities can be organized? Sport events, service activities such as visiting the elderly, making a school newsletter, community projects, cleaning and collecting paper on plastic, pedagogic activities such as visiting museums, scientific exhibitions, historical sites, collect clothes, food, books for needy family or children in need, the preparation of festival events. To whom to address the activities? We can direct the activities to community, to children or family, to people at work. To organize a project, it is very important to have a method and there are open questions that can help in the construction process. Questions like these, whom to direct it to? What goal do we want to achieve? What benefits does it create? How to do it? This question may include activities, the steps to be taken, the time to be planned, the people involved, and then what social impact can it have? During this organizational process, let us remember that if we connect to our highest source of wisdom, our heart, we can be inspired and guided in achieving something beautiful, creative, and beneficial. Heart inspiration leads us to carry out a heart project. In this process, there are three significant elements that emerge. Intuition, inspired and guided by the heart. Creativity, a beautiful potential that can be released individually or in a group, which produces original ideas, sees new connections, discover unexplored paths. And then work method, useful for carrying out any project in life and work. Now, let's go to the workshop with the group sessions. In today's workshop, the group groups will creatively think of a project on the value of peace to be promoted to community, children or young people, people in the workplace, and to build and organize a small project, the questions indicated in the graphic will help. We will post this instruction in the chat. We have the time of 20 minutes. The group facilitator will share in plenary a summary of the conceived project. Now we can start. So it is time to, uh, the system will split us in groups. Please uh, join and, and work on what Fabiana has told us, along the lines that uh, she has told us. And uh, remember, remember the questions. Uh, maybe, maybe we could put we, on the chat, on the chat you will see that those questions have been reproduced, the instructions for groups three, four, five, six, one, two. Okay, we'll meet in 20 minutes time. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. We are all back from the rooms. Yes, 
How many nice faces. Thank you very <laughs> well, much. Thank you very much for being here. Welcome back. Welcome back. We can start sharing some projects. We can start with, with the group one. Thank you. Thank you very much. All of you, your contributions have been fantastic. I think this has been a very, very useful uh, meeting and uh, with the clear instructions for the future. I would like to, to ask, uh, to, to remind you at this moment that uh, the, the next meeting will be on the 21st of May for other compatible strategies. It will be session 15, and it will be one before the last one. And now before we end, I'm going to ask, first of all, Fabiana, whether she wants to add something, and then Raksha, please. Um, I, I'm very happy uh, to do this path together. Uh, to bring out individual and the collective creative potential. Educare is a long life learning. Um, it nourishes us and makes our hearts sing. And uh, I am very happy to do this. Thank you, Raksha. Fabiana. Raksha? Yes, I would just first want to thank also Fabiana for this beautiful workshop that you've guided, because one of the things we emphasized in the part of the presentation was that once we understand the objectives of Satyasai Educare, which is the objective of life to know ourselves, to bring out who we truly are, it, it, there's, there's room for all our creativity and intuition when we connect to our spiritual heart and that seat of wisdom. So it was very nice, uh, Fabiana, through your workshop to hear everyone's um, uh, proposals, suggestions, ideas, creativity. And I would just like to thank you as well, Jordi, for guiding the session in such a warm way always and so uh, friendly as you are. So this, is, this was very nice to share with all of you here. And maybe just to end with this um, part when, when we were talking about in the presentation, what is the ideal scenario when we were talking about the three approaches? And there was a part on the slide that said, ideally human values should, and I added should and can find their place in whatever form of work and interaction we engage in. It said with children, but I would like to just remind myself and everyone that actually human values, the practice of human values, finds its place in whatever form of work and interaction we engage in. When we are on our own, when we are with our family members, when we are at our workplaces, when we are in our societies, because this is our very true nature. So any moment, is perfect to bring out who we truly are. So I just wanted to share that thought and thank you all from the depth of my heart. Too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Raksha. Uh, we are going to uh, leave now with some beautiful music prepared by George, as usual. And uh, we wait for you uh, on the next 21st of May, Saturday. And please enjoy your weekend. Goodbye.